So I've recently received my new HP Spectre X360 15. This is the 2018 edition, featuring Intel and AMD's new processor and graphics combo. It's an i7-8705G processor with a Radeon RX Vega MGL graphics chip fitted tightly together. The result is a powerful mobile graphics setup that takes up a lot less space than traditional discrete graphics, perfect for a slim new 2-in-1 like the Spectre. So I'm going to talk about my early impressions of the machine, take you through some general testing, and then put the Radeon graphics chip through its paces with some gaming benchmarks. If there's anything you want to know that I don't cover in the video, feel free to ask. There are several different configurations of the machine, going all the way up to 16GB of RAM and a 2TB SSD. I have the one with 8 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, this should be plenty for what I'll be using it for. But even if I change my mind, no problem. According to the service manual, the RAM is fully upgradable to 16 gigabytes. I really wish all laptops had this feature, so nice one HP. The Spectre comes with a very shiny 4K IPS display. Viewing angles seem pretty good, but I do see an odd rainbow effect when viewing from a top angle. Is this normal for an IPS display? This is the first one I've had, so let me know. I guess you're not likely to be viewing the screen from that angle anyway. Oh, and did I mention the screen was shiny? Well, I mean it, the display is very reflective, which I'm personally not a fan of. It means any light sources behind you are reflected on the screen, which can get pretty annoying. There is some noticeable light bleed coming from the edges of the display. It's not really a huge deal, as you can't really see it unless it's a dark background, but still, it's a shame. The keyboard feels pretty nice to use, with a comfortable amount of travel, nothing to complain about really. There's a number pad on the right, though I hear it may put off some of you that do a lot of typing, as it means the main keys aren't centred to the display. For someone like me though, it's a great addition. For connectivity, the Spectre has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, an HDMI out, an SD card reader, and one traditional USB 3.1 port, so no need to use any adapters for your USB devices. Oh, and look at that, a headphone jack. That's something you can't take for granted nowadays. Good news. There's also a fingerprint reader on the right hand side. As you'd expect of a machine with discrete graphics, the Spectre comes with an external power brick, but it's not too big or heavy. For audio, HP have made a pretty big deal about the speakers, and while there's only so much they can do with such a thin device, for what they are, I think they sound pretty good. Not much bass as you might expect, but overall, not bad. Still, I don't think I'll be ditching my headphones anytime soon. Performance within Windows seems quick and fluid, though honestly, I still think Windows 10 as an operating system is pretty slow compared to Windows 7, which my old Toshiba has. I don't think this is HP's fault though, as the Spectre is easily the best performing Windows 10 device I've used so far. With fast startup enabled, it boots to desktop almost instantly. Battery life is adequate, but not brilliant. I tested it with a combination of video streaming, background downloads, and files transferring from an external hard drive, at the same time for much of it. With high brightness settings, I set the laptop on a flat but textured surface. With this setup, the fans kicked in and I lost 50% battery in about 2 hours, so you can probably expect 4 or 5 hours of moderate usage. But if you're doing lighter work like word processing, I expect it'll get you through a typical workday without needing to plug in. It's taking me some time to get used to the touchpad. I don't mind that it's off-center, but because the left and right clicks are part of the touchpad itself, I've sometimes been accidentally moving the cursor while trying to click. I'm sure it's something I'll get used to, but it's worth noting. So the Spectre is a 2-in-1 device, so its touchscreen can also be used as a pen tablet. My Spectre came with the HP Tilt Pen, and the drawing experience? Well, I can see why artist gloves are considered a must with pen displays like this. With my palm resting on the screen, I found my lines wobbly and sometimes the pen wouldn't register well, not to mention my palm sometimes dotting ink onto the canvas. Needless to say, I'll be getting an artist glove ASAP before I can give a final verdict. If you're using Photoshop CS6, you'll encounter a UI scaling issue with the Spectre's 4K display. There is a workaround though, I'll put a link in the description. Now, how about that Vega M graphics muscle we've heard so much about? For you gamers out there, I'm pleased to say the new Spectre is a very capable machine for light gaming, even with the latest titles. I haven't played a full game session yet, but I had a quick go at a few games. Far Cry 5 at 1080p and medium settings, I was getting about 35 to 45 frames per second. In the Final Fantasy XV demo at average settings 1080p, I was getting frame rates in the 30s, sometimes 40s. I only saw it dip to 29 frames per second once during an intense scene. In Deus Ex Mankind Divided, medium settings 1080p, I was getting mostly between 50 and 60 frames per second. There's sometimes a brief frame rate dip shortly after launching a game, dropping frames down to the single digits. I don't know what that's about, but it doesn't seem to be a lasting problem. I'll be keeping an eye on it in the weeks to come. 
Remember, the system I'm using here has 8GB of RAM. Some of these games recommend 16 gigs, so if you get the 16 gig configuration you may get better results. I should note that the system didn't automatically switch to the Vega GPU by default. I had to manually add the games to the Radeon settings list, so keep that in mind. Also make sure the system's set to best power mode before you launch any games. Before I go, one last thing about the machine's cooling. The fans kick in pretty loud when under stress. The system did throttle for a moment once while video editing. Doesn't seem too bad so far, but I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. So what do you think of the new Spectre? Have you got one already? I'd like to know if you've had a different experience. So, these have been my early impressions of the new Spectre. I hope the video has been helpful. Remember, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Or you can tweet me at Elliot underscore Gardner. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button, and subscribe if you want to see more. That's it from me. Have a great day.